Hey folks, this is Kalani. Wallows Drano is just a few days away, literally a few days away, so excited, but that time between now and release can feel like an eternity. So we're going to have a look at a few things you can do to pass the time, a few things which can help use your time constructively towards a better start in World of Draenor. So the first thing is gold, and now before you all shy away and start scowling at me, gold is incredibly important to a nice comfortable start. Basically, if you have more gold, you have less to worry about. Is there a new item appearing on the auction house which will help you get into those raids, help you do a little bit more damage? Fantastic! Got the gold for it? Even better. Is there a new shiny mount on any of the reputation vendors? Hmm, I think we'll take that, and we won't have to worry about being conservative with any of our gold. It just helps everywhere, and the biggest thing going forward is obviously your garrisons. Garrisons will eat up about 13k gold just by building and upgrading everything. That's a lot of gold. That's a lot of gold, especially if you don't already have it. Bear in mind, the leveling process will give you a nice chunk of gold, but I don't think it's going to cover all of the cost. So I'd say 10k is a nice minimum amount to go forward into Warlords of Draenor to not have to worry about any of your garrison costs. I think that'll, that's a nice benchmark to aim for if you're a little bit below that. So obviously it's fine and dandy saying go get yourself some gold, but how exactly can you do that? There's a few very easy ways right now. The best and most efficient while really not requiring any effort at all, is to go farm some dungeons. So both Stonecore and Grimbatol are very good for getting a nice amount of gold with minimum effort. It does take a little bit of time, but if you want to swap effort for time, you can still make quite a lot of gold with professions. Going into Warlords and this very last week, things might change. People would either want to get everything ready to level as fast as possible, or simply not care anymore. So professions would be less time if you already have the professions, more effort and potentially more risky. So I would actually recommend heading over to Stone Court and Green Patrol simply because you can get between 2 and 3k per hour and you'd have that 10k in no time. Now the second thing is something a lot of you may not have a lot of experience with and this is pet battles. Pet battles can be a lot of fun, but I see them being one of the things which only gets harder once you get behind. So right now it's kind of difficult to catch up to all the people who are at 25 with several pets and know exactly what they're doing in every situation. It's kind of difficult to catch up to those folks. I've personally tried and I can tell you it's quite a steep learning curve, and basically you might get to the point where you need to buy yourself a few new pets, which costs gold, ties in nicely to the previous factor, but it's time. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of learning, and at the end of the day it's a lot of leveling, which obviously isn't fun, or it can be fun, it can be fun, don't get me wrong, it can be a lot of fun, but when you get to your 8th, 9th, 20th, 60th pet, things start to grate a little bit. Um, and you kind of need to get quite a few pets under your belt if you want to be at the tippy top of the pet battles arena. There is an arena, I'm joking, but either which way, if you have free time, if you can't find any way to fill it, and you want either achievements, vanity pets, or something just to do at the end of the raid, Pet Battles is a good option. It can get you a little bit of gold. You can actually make quite a lot of gold by leveling up certain rare pets. You go out, farm the pet, level it to 25, boom, 10k in the bank. So whether you're looking for something else to do, whether you're looking to fill in those extra achievement points, or want to make a little bit of gold on the side, Pet Battles can be a, a decent way to do that. The issue is that it's only going to get harder to catch up to the folk who are already doing it. So doing it now instead of after Warlords, after you're bored of everything to do with Warlords, it's, it's maybe something to consider. So my third and fourth point are pretty much exactly the same. They cover the, the same kind of ground, and that's mounts and transmogrification. So mounts and transmogrification is pretty straightforward. You want a shiny mount? 
go farm them out. Some of them are in dungeons, some of them are in raids. Remember, we've got an extra lockout for any of the raids you want to uh, poke down before Warlords does release. So it's not the end of the world if you still don't have your ashes, if you still don't have your horse from Achaemen, or if you simply want the Raven Lord, go ahead and get some more heroic Sethic Halls under your belt. It's it's self-explanatory, really. If you want a nice shiny mount to ride around in Warlords, you've still got a little bit of time. Now, there are a lot of mounts out there, so if you're missing one or two, this obviously won't fill a great amount of time, but if you're starting fresh somewhere, like I am, if maybe you've never looked into mount farming before, there are a lot of places you can go, a lot of places you can endlessly farm to try for some of these mounts. Some of them for achievements, some of them prestige, some of them just shiny to ride around on. Either which way, if you're just dead bored sitting around in the capital, you could find yourself a new ride. Transmog is exactly the same. If there's some pieces of gear from raids, from dungeons, from out in the world and random drops, you can go farm them. You can happily knock down those old raids and dungeons and hopefully get a chance at making that dream set for yourself. As a little aside here, gold kind of pokes its way in as well, because some transmog, which are bind on equip, sell for one hell of a pretty penny. People like to look good, and the people who like to look good tend to have a lot of money, so they're willing to spend an extortionate amount sometimes on some of the shinier weapon transmogs or some of the shinier armor transmogs. So it might be a nice way to hit down two birds with one time sink, I guess. So transmog and mounts poke their way in there as well. Now the last thing might seem a little strange, but the last thing you want to do is burn yourself out on World of Warcraft just before an expansion launches. So the last thing that I can encourage you to do is take a step back. Go play something else, go do something else with your time. Warlords might eat a considerable amount of your time when it launches, so consider doing things that need to be done before it launches. If you have any anything to do in the week which you need to get done, any deadlines, I know it's coming up on exam time for quite a lot of people, maybe get that studying done before Warlords, spend a little time in Warlords, and don't feel so crappy when you're cramming the night before your exam. That might be an idea. Anything to do with work and job related, anything to do with health and fitness related, get it done at the start of the week and don't put it off. It's a nice break from the game, you come back nice and fresh, and you won't feel like crap when you stay up two days in a row simply because you want to play endlessly. Now the other thing is, if you've got nothing like that, if you've got nothing outside of the game which you just have to get done, go play something else. Blizzard are happily poking around pretty much every genre right now. If you don't have any of their other games, StarCraft 2, Diablo 3, you can still play those casually. Go ahead and pick up Hearthstone if you haven't already. You get a mount in WoW and you, you throw a few cards around. It's a nice time sink, it'll, it'll pass the time nicely. And you go back to Warcraft with a clean mindset. It's, it can do wonders for your enjoyment. So get some gold, maybe level up some pets, figure out your mounts and transmog, and at the end of the day, if you can't find anything to do in-game, don't sit there trying. If nothing appeals to you, take a step back. Go elsewhere, take a break from the game until Wednesday night when you can just go no lifer and bash everything down. Absorb all of the new content and have a great time. But that's what I'll be doing. At least I'll be trying to do some of that. Maybe the last one doesn't quite count for me. I still want to make videos, so I might be trapped a little there. But I enjoy it. It's fantastic. So I guess I can't complain too much. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions or queries, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to get back to you. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun. And as always, I will see you next time.